Hi, I'm Brooke Mabry, a member of the professional learning team at NWEA. Thanks for tuning in to the next episode in our series of Social Emotional Learning. Today's episode is about using icebreakers to build positive peer relationships in the classroom. And I'm, in, I'm joined by another member of the professional learning team, Lori McManus, who's gonna share with you some ways to adapt this simple technique of icebreakers to various remote learning environments. Thanks for joining us, Lori. Thanks, Brooke. Hi, I'm Lori McManus, and I'm a professional learning content designer with NWEA. And I'm very glad to spend this time with you today um, to talk about realities of schooling in the context of COVID-19. And the focus of our time together today is going to be how we as teachers, as educators, build a positive learning climate, especially considering peer relationships in this context of distance learning. In education, when we start a new class at the beginning of a school year, or when we start a new semester, when we have team, uh, students form new collaborative teams, we use icebreakers. Why? Because they attend to the peer relationships that undergird a positive learning environment, a safe, respectful learning environment. So it's a strategy that meets the, the social emotional needs of students. When you play one word, each student, um, either verbally or in writing by bolding something, um, communicates one word, just one, that they feel represents themselves or their life. The second thing is that they would take the time to actually explain a little bit about why they chose that word. When students share and others are listening, they're listening specifically for points of connection. So you're asking them to identify one of the other students' words that really resonates with them. And once they identify the one that really resonates, they get to share about what resonates and why. And that icebreaker works to establish a safe climate and build positive peer relationships. So in a virtual environment, um, maybe we're learning synchronously. So the students are in Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, whatever platform your, your uh, school or district is using. So in that reality, that sharing could still occur exactly like it does in a traditional classroom environment. If students are learning asynchronously, where they're maybe doing shared docs on Google Docs or any other kind of shared um, document platform, they could go in and write their one word in bold letters or capital letters or whatever kind of offsets it and then describe in writing or if they're young children in pictures um you know drawing with the drawing tools that are available on these platforms um their one word and the reason they cho chose it and then because of all the sharing features on on google docs etc other students could go in and comment on the one word that resonates with them and tell why. What if one of the paper-based assignments was to write out your one word and an explanation or a picture if you're dealing with young children, um, and then students submit that in whatever way, via email, via return to school, via whatever way, and then there's a swap. So they get, in, um, in return, they get a couple of students' 
um, responses, and then they get to comment on those responses and write down the points of connection or, or what resonates with them. I think about one other icebreaker that I've often used, again, one that can be scaled up or scaled down, although this particular icebreaker can't be scaled down to the very young children, K through two level, because they don't quite have a grasp on why you would be encouraged to lie, <laughs> but older grade levels, it works, and it's called Two Truths and a Lie, and you're probably familiar with it. Students think about two truths and a lie, like... I'm Lori McManus. I have a master's degree. I have five cavities. I have a condition called hammer toes. One of those is a lie. And so students are tasked with trying to figure out for other students, which one is the lie? In my case, it's the fact that I uh, do not have five cavities. I have zero cavities. <laughs> I just got strong teeth. I don't do anything special. <laughs> But that's the kind of icebreaker that you can then as a teacher say, hey, so how can I transfer that easily into another, into my new virtual context, asynchronous or synchronous or paper-based context? What can I do? But think about all the icebreakers that you already know about, or you could go online and Google icebreakers. And, um, and identify those that you feel like you can make just slight shifts or adjustments to transfer them into your new context. Thanks for those tips, Lori. I know that using a tried and true method is a great way to anchor to the previous experience the students have been, had in our classrooms that really helps to build that um, relationship and continue some of the connection between being in the brick and mortar classroom and transferring over into uh, the virtual space. So thanks for joining us for today's episode. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything in this social emotional learning series. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to tweet at NWEA or at Brooke Mabry 21 and let us know how you're using other ways in your classroom to build positive peer relationships so that you strengthen that social-emotional learning team in your classroom. We'll see you next time.